Hi, imagine this, what would happen when you combine a cat and a human? Wait, let's first go back to the beginning to see how we got here. At the end of the video I'll show you what happens when you combine them. To get to this point I used a neural network. A neural network is a computing system that mimics how your brain works. When you're doing something with neural networks you need a lot of training data. And I don't just mean 100 images, more like 20,000 or even 200,000. Depends on what you want to do. The links to the dataset that I use in this video are in the description. 200,000 images is a lot of data, so the first thing I did when importing all the images was lowering the resolution. Of course it depends on the aspect ratio of the dataset, so instead of just using for example images that are 178 by 218 pixels with 3 color channels, it's just 54 by 64 pixels with again 3 color channels. Phew, that's a little lighter on my RAM. So the goal for the network is to generate the same kind of images and preferably we want to be able to control them with sliders. To do this we use something called an autoencoder. What we do is feeding the network the images as input and training it. So it spits out the same images. Now of course it won't be exactly the same image but it should get close. This seems a bit unlogic. Why would you want a network which basically outputs the input? But that's not all. In the middle of the network there is a bottleneck, also called a latent space. This latent space is a smaller representation of the data. So when I input an image, it will be propagated forward and get smaller down the line. Until it is only a few values. This latent space can consist of 10 values 100 values or something else. That also depends on which kind of images you want to reproduce and how detailed you want the output to be. Then it goes through some more layers but now getting bigger again until it has the same size as the input image. By doing this you can basically see the network has two parts, an encoder and a decoder. The encoder encodes data to a smaller representation and the decoder decodes it to the original data. If the network is trained well enough, you can use this as a compression algorithm, but because it's definitely still not perfect, we don't use neural networks to compress data yet. In the beginning, the network won't be very smart, so it will output nonsense, and the images will look like noise. But by using some fancy algorithms to adjust the weights and biases, we can make the model smarter and let it train. Weights and biases are the learnable parameters of your model. These change what the output will be. If you train it for long enough, the output images will start to look like the input. This is an example where I let the model train for just one minute, which isn't much, with only 20 values or dimensions like they're called in the latent space, which also isn't a lot of dimensions. And here you can see the same model just with 80 dimensions in the latent space and that has trained for an hour, which again isn't long. You may be asking yourself, how can we generate new images with this? The answer is actually quite simple, we just cut off the encoder and control the values in the latent space ourselves. With this we can already get some cool results. Also, I know the GUI isn't beautiful, but I just didn't have enough time to make a GUI as cool as one from my evolution project. The problem is, the sliders make no sense and aren't in a particular order. That's because the encoder that we just cut off knew which values did what and how it could use them to generate an image. We don't know. When training a network, nobody knows what's going on inside that network. And when we just try to control the latent space ourselves, it won't be phenomenal. So that's where PCA comes in. PCA, or Principal Component Analysis, is normally used to reduce the number of dimensions of our data. But why would you use that if we already did that with our autoencoder? Well, we won't use it to reduce the dimensions but to transform them. With PCA we can do a linear transformation after normalizing our data. 
so it gets more interpretable. Okay, wait, what do I mean by normalizing the data and making it more interpretable? Let's start with normalizing. Right now, the model can choose any range of values to describe the image in the latent space. So it can be between negative 50,000 and 300,000, so a very large range. But it can also be between negative 1 and 1. We don't want that, because then our sliders that control the values would need to have a gigantic range to make sure that the average and normal distribution is in between these values. So, by normalizing the data, I can set the average to zero and the normal distribution to a smaller number, like for example 1. Then, by applying PCA, the slider values get transformed linearly and get sorted from biggest difference to smallest. As a result, when I for example have 100 dimensions in the latent space, the first slider will have the biggest impact on the output and the last one will only be a small detail. Ok, I think you're getting bored of hearing my voice, so let's see it in action. For this model, I set the dimensions of the latent space to 80 and gave it the training dataset of celebrity faces. In the beginning, the face that you see, or simply the average of the training batch, is very symmetrical and perfect. The more it evolves and trains, the average face will look more like real faces, so not perfect and less like a Barbie doll. You can also use autoencoder for loads of other cool things, like denoising an image, bringing color into a grayscale image, and filling in covered parts of the image. I'll show you some examples at the end. Now that the model is done training, let's take a look at some comparisons. Okay, let's say 20. Okay, this one did a pretty good job. Now the reason that the reconstructed face will uh, look more feminine most of the time is because there are more uh, women in the training data. For the next image, okay, that's pretty good job. Okay, also pretty good. Also the skin color just the gender again. Now here also it did a pretty good job, I don't know what this is supposed to be. Also this is the training data, so it has never seen these images, also kind of the hand here, so it did a pretty good job on that. Just go through, through them a little bit quicker. Okay. Well I think it did a pretty good job on them. And let's now generate some new faces. Like you can see the sliders are initialized at the average face, which looks like this. There are only 20 sliders of the 80 on the screen because I was too lazy to make a scroll bar and the max number of sliders that you can put horizontally before it is getting unorganized is about 20. On the left I have three buttons, one to reset want to randomize and want to choose an image that you want to send through the autoencoder. Let's start with testing out the sliders. Okay, so the first slider seems to be the darkness and lightness of the background. Now when I'm not recording it's, true, it's a little bit faster just because I'm recording that it lags quite a bit. This is more like where the light comes from. This is just the overall darkness.
Let's also see what the randomized faces look like. Okay. That looks actually pretty good. Okay. And of course, it's not, for example, this one is a little bit less human, but that's also logic because, again, even with PCA, we don't know how to control all the values. But it does actually a pretty good job. Okay, I'll reset it. So let's see what happens when you choose an image of a person. I'll take one from the test because uh, he has never seen these before. Um, let's take this lady. Okay, that's quite scary. <laughs> so, n of course, not every image will be correctly. Now the angle is usually quite good. So it's quite correct on the angle. I'm just choosing random images here. Also, some faces really look scary. Uh, and now, the moment you've all been waiting for. What happens when you combine a cat and a human? Let's select a cat image. Okay. Let's take this one. I think that's a pretty average cat. And... Oh, that's anticlimactic. Sorry that I let you wait for this while I knew it wasn't going to be great. But I don't want to let you leave empty handed, so let me explain to you really quickly what we can do to solve this issue. When a model is trained, it expects human images, not an image of a cat. That's why the output is rubbish. We can solve this though, by using deepfakes, but that's for the next video. Sorry for the stupid end, I know. But do not miss the next video and other projects, make sure to subscribe and ring the bell. Also, here are some results when using it to denoise images, etc. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like. If you have a question, know something that I could do better, or if you just enjoyed the video, let me know in the comments. I'll try to respond as quickly as possible. This video is probably a bit long, so sorry about that. Congrats if you made it till here. Maybe you want to check out some of my older projects, and I'll probably do some more things with machine learning in the future. I hope I'll see you in the next one. Bye! Hey, this is future me here. I just want to say these videos take tens of hours of work, so it's really a lot of time that I put into these uh, to make. So I would really appreciate it if you could subscribe and maybe even share this video. Thanks.